Good morning and welcome back. So today we're just going to uh, do a little bit of a different video because we're not actually going to be doing anything. We're going to be thinking. We're going to be putting our thinking caps on because I've run into an area that has stumped me a little bit. And so if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. But here's the predicament. So a virtual pinball machine is controlled essentially entirely by a single switch, a single power switch. It's not even powered. It's just a regular momentary switch, which means if you push it, it doesn't latch. There's two terminals coming out of it. Uh, this button, I'll show you where it goes and what it does. So we're going under the machine. And as you can see here, this is the same switch I was holding in my hand. It's just a little button that sits underneath the cabinet. Uh, and essentially you come up to a pinball machine and you just push the button and the machine turns on. So we're inside the cabinet. I've got the button on the other side. It's connected simply to two wires. I've just used alligator clips just to demonstrate and I'll show you where these two wires are supposed to go. So this is the Pinscape build guide. It's It really serves as like the Bible on building a virtual pinball machine written by a clever chap uh, who's kindly published online and has been a resource for many, many people. So the, the topic which sort of joins us together is called power switching. And essentially what that means is, and I'm going to scroll down here, is I've got this little diagram. Uh, I've got a green button here, but I showed you a red button, same thing. That button is supposed to connect to the motherboard of your computer. And inside the, the computer is a power supply. And when that button is pushed, it's very, it's exactly the same as a power button on the front of your computer. You push the button, front of the computer, the computer turns on. With a pinball machine, sort of there's an additional magic in that the way it's plugged into the switch, the, the power strip, it it activates the power switch and turns everything else on. The monitors, the amplifiers, all the toys, all the power supplies. So that soft power button controls everything. It's supposed to connect to a motherboard, but I've run into a challenge. So this is my Dell motherboard uh, computer. Dell is a bit different. D is for different because it is not the same as what you saw on the screen in terms of how a power switch connects to a motherboard. It uses what's called proprietary sort of hardware, if you will, where it has this little harness, and I'll zoom in in a sec. But essentially, it's a five pin thing, plugs into the motherboard, and this is just a micro switch with an LED on it. This here connects to this is the this is the on off switch of a computer. If you've everyone seen these, it's pretty standard. So when you push that switch, you're really just hitting a micro switch which sends information to this pin to the motherboard. So what happens is when you push the micro switch, two of these leads are shorted together, which powers on the computer. So to figure out which leads I have to short together, I had to do a bunch of different tests. So, you know, I used a, a multimeter to check for continuity. You know, I took notes to see which pins uh, connect. So I was uh, sort of sticking pins in here and then connecting it all up. And I figured out that if I join pin two and three, it goes off and blah, 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 blah. And so it gets quite technical. Um, not technical, it just gets quite nuanced because it's sort of pushing, I, I don't know how to say this, pushing the boundary of the envelope of my skill set. Yes, I can figure my way through this, um, but I get to this point and I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm trying to do is figure out how to connect two specific prongs to the switch. I mean, that's all there is to it, but there's not all there is to it because, because it's a proprietary switch. When I was testing it last night, the computer knows that I've been effing around with it. So when I turned it on, it had a warning saying, oh, there's a power. The power lead is malfunctioning. It, it knows if all six or all five leads aren't connected. Um, I know that I'm turning this into a long story, but it, essentially, this is a $900 computer. Uh, I'm messing around with power, and I yes, I could figure it out, but I have to measure my chance of success against the chance of, of doing damage to this. Yes, I can. So I guess what I'm saying is that I'm not entirely comfortable. What I would need to do is chop this. 
I would need to figure out, and I think I could, the two wires to connect to this. The three wires will have to stay connected to the LED. It's little. My chance of success, it would take a while. And I could probably do it, but then again, I could probably not do it. And the not do it means that I'm, I'm risking this. So I'm coming up. I'm going to think about uh, some additional ideas on how I can turn this computer on and how I can turn my cabinet on. So let's look at some different alternatives. So this is the first idea. Pretty straightforward. I've just put this here just for position. It would mean unlocking this, opening the door, sticking your arm in, and then turning the computer on with the power. So the problem with this method, obviously, it's a pain because you got to undo this, got to stick your hand in, turn it on. The challenge is obviously other people doing it. I don't mind doing this. I know what's inside it. But, you know, if I got kids, you know, they want to play, they don't want to, they don't want to have to do this. Um, you know, it's a, it's a challenge, but it's the easiest way. You just open the door and turn the computer on. And, and then when you're done, you just do the same thing and turn it off. So let's look at the second method. All right, so let's look at idea number two. Uh, they might get progressively get wackier and wackier, but that's okay. So the goal is obviously to turn that button on, and the first option was actually use my finger. Second option would be to use some sort of thing. So I want you to imagine this is a piece of wood, uh, a round piece of dowel, a, a rod. It's going to be longer than this. But essentially this would, so it sits in here, and it would rest on the power button. And the other end, this is where it gets kind of cool. This is the coin return. So you can actually lift that up and have it like a little pole that essentially turn it on. You just do what I just did. Put your finger in here. And as your finger goes in, you can just push the rod. And you're actually are turning on the, the power. <laughs> I don't know. Is that crazy? That's idea number two. It's actually, you wouldn't mean, need to undo the door. It would turn on, it would turn off. It, obviously, the rod would have to be secured in there, so it wouldn't go anywhere else but backwards and forwards. But that is idea number two. All right, so this is idea number three, or alternative idea number three. Uh, this is going to be the craziest, but I think it could be the funnest. I really want to use a button under the machine. I think that's, you know, that's what the old machines had. They had a switch. Um, but I need it to do something, and this is what I'm thinking. This is a, a stepper motor. It's very, very tiny. It works, um, it's like a little thing that turns, uh, but you can control very precisely the movement. It's hard to see it, but if you know what it is, there's like a little motor in here and it rotates. When there's current applied to it, it also moves precisely of how much you want it to move. And in order to do that, you program it, or you control it with an Arduino. And these are sort of examples of Arduinos I've used in various projects. I haven't very had, I have had zero success with these in the past, only because you have to learn how to program. And yes, you can do it. And there's people who do it all the time. And, you know, things take time. If I don't get it in five minutes, I get impatient. So, but it's a learning curve. Essentially, here's my idea. This would be a robotic finger to turn that button on. Now, hear me out. Don't laugh. Here's my little finger, my little hand that I drew. Now, this would obviously be plastic or wood. And essentially, I would program the Arduino that when it received a signal, this button, it would be processed by the Arduino that says, oh, the button's been pushed, turn the stepper motor 90 degrees. And so this little finger would go, Oop, and it would hold the little finger on the power switch of the computer. And then it would come back. And then when I push it again, it would do the same thing. It would, I could program it, you know, two pushes, whatever, you know, turn it on and off. So that's my little concept idea number three. Um, so have you stopped laughing yet? I think it's, it's got, it's got merit. So we'll see. Okay. So that's the, uh, that's the ideas I have. I've got the initial idea, which was persevere with this little guy. It would mean cutting two of the wires that I know have to be shorted together. Uh, I would have to run a lead to the power, to the, to the button. This would plug into the motherboard. Uh, I hope I wouldn't get an error. Um, 
It's very small. That's again, this is, these things concern me. So it's it's working on very small wires. Um, that's the initial idea. Uh, that's the idea by the book, which says you direct the switch to the motherboard to turn it on and off. Okay, so if I don't do it that way, I came up with three other ideas. First one was unlocking the coin door, sticking your arm in, and just pushing the button. Second idea was my piece of wood or my rod, which would be nested in like a you know a little channel thing, and I, yeah. Uh, so you would just push this and the power would go on and it would turn off. Third one, a little bit unconventional, but fun, was the Arduino setup, which was using the button, which I really, really want to do, using Arduino to program a stepper motor to turn my little finger to turn the button on and off. So this one, I like it. It would take a time, but it would be fun. You know, it's I, I'm doing this because I want to learn stuff. And I, as I mentioned before, I've had, haven't had much success programming Arduinos, and I'm not doing it. It's not going to be a whole lot of programming. It's turn x number of degrees, then turn back. It's pretty simple. I would mount this. It'll be fixed. Uh, I don't want it to. I want a very high chance of success, and I think I could get there. But then again, I could burn a lot of time and figure out that the motor is not strong enough. Uh, and then I'd probably search more and I'd be spending hours on this. So four options. If you know a fifth or a sixth, let me know. I'd love to hear it. Um, I'm not going to do anything on these yet. I'm just going to mull on them and see where they end up. But in the meantime, you know, there's plenty of other stuff to do. So, all right. It's not a thumb, but a thumbs up. All right. Cheers.